response strategy model for intrusion response systems. Um, initially, uh, we'll describe the problem um, and the, the, uh, the rationale uh, behind our approach, and then we'll present the basic concepts be behind the response strategy model, and then some preliminary results from our uh, evaluation, uh, which hopefully shows uh, how it's meant to work, and then finally draw some conclusions. So. The link between the success rate of an attack and uh, the timeliness of uh, a response has already been uh, established for many years. So we know that the success rate of an attack can be 0% if a response is instant and it can reach even 100% if a response is issued, say, uh, within after 30 hours. And this is based on a simulation study that Cohen did uh, quite a few years ago. But we know that timely response is uh, really important. So what we really want is to have some way of mapping incidents with appropriate responses. And you might think that's easy, or you might say, okay, all you need to do is just statically map particular types of alerts with types of responses. In fact, these static mapping systems have been available for years in intrusion detection systems. Active responses have been available, but they are not used. And in fact, some people have likened them to giving shotguns, automated shotguns to monkeys and just letting them fire indistinctively. And that's pretty much how it is. So it doesn't really work very well. Therefore, uh, we need to have some filtering mechanism, some um, additional uh, contextual awareness for these systems to enable them to make more informed decisions. And so existing response systems uh, have considered different approaches where, for example, they try to select responses based on uh, the goals that the responses are trying to uh, achieve, or they do some cost-benefit analysis between the response and the attack, so that it will, they will avoid scenarios where overly costly responses are issued for trivial attacks. In other cases, they try to set uh, the response, the maximum response stopping power, so kind of like having different levers in that automated gun. Um, and so by considering different contextual factors uh, that can influence the response decision process, they are able to, uh, to granulate the response uh, decision mechanism. And all these approaches are valid and they, they are very useful at helping us to understand the response decision pro uh, problem. The main limitation that they have is that they are mainly proof of concept models and so they have not been um, evaluated in practice so we don't know whether they work well or not. We don't know if the decisions they are making are the correct ones or not. So this is one problem and um, in one case at least, uh, the response stopping power which was my PhD research, uh, they have some limitations because they have not been devised with practicality in mind. So some of the contextual factors that they are considering, they would not necessarily be easy to implement, to measure in practice, so they are not easily quantifiable. So based on all that, we try to uh, propose a model that would be able to map incidents with uh, uh, responses uh, based on their risk index, so their priority. This is actually um, extended work uh, from a previous paper that we did on the risk index model where it considers easily quantifiable factors, indicators, uh, to calculate this risk index. So the risk index model, you can find out more information, I don't really, uh, I cannot really um, uh, say too much about it, but it uses um, the analytic hierarchy process and it uses information, it calculates the risk index based on uh, characteristics Statistics of uh, the attack itself, so uh, the priority of uh, the alert that is being generated, the CBSS score of the vulnerability that is affected, uh, the volume of traffic, the timing of the attack, and so on. And it also considers information about the asset uh, that is affected, so how important uh, that server is, and you can do that with some basic traffic analysis uh, to see how busy it is, how easy it is to replace it. And um, so what is the patch level of the server and so on. And so based on this risk index, uh, incidents are being rated and ranked uh, into a list and then they are mapped into four quadrants uh, based on that priority. 
and each quadrant will correspond to different levels of response. So the highest priority quadrant will be uh, the avoidance, which is associated with uh, blocking responses. So uh, incidents that are categorized in, in this uh, quadrant will result in uh, blocking uh, the activity, uh, resetting traffic or blocking the traffic and so on. For uh, urgent incidents against critical assets, the mitigation Quadrant is for uh, cases when the less critical incidents, where uh, you are trying to not necessarily stop the attack but uh, mitigate uh, its effects. So you're trying to limit the damage that uh, it can do. And so uh, it, it can be uh, limiting access, user rights, uh, or maybe not allowing particular services and so on. And uh, the third quadrant is the transfer, where uh, the main aim of uh, the responses uh, in that category is to find out more information about an incident. And the final quadrant is the acceptance, which uh, supports mainly passive responses. So logging information, generating alerts, uh, uh, sending them to a, CISLO, uh, sorry, to a central management console, and so on. We try to um, evaluate uh, whether this model works uh, or not. And so, um, in the absence of any other intrusion response systems, any evaluation data from other in, uh, intrusion response systems, we used the next best thing, which was to prioritize incidents based on the SNOP priority, the alert priority, and uh, the CVSS score, and then compare the results with the response uh, strategy model. And in order to see whether it works or not, first of all, we compare to SNOP priority and CVSS, but also we try to see whether roughly uh, the true incidents are uh, categorized in the top two quadrants and whether the false uh, incidents are categorized in the lower uh, priority quadrants. We use the, the MIT 2000 DAPA dataset because it's a widely used dataset, and so hopefully uh, it could be used as a basic for comparison. And some preliminary results showed promising results. Definitely we can tell that um, um, the uh, response model, a response model works better than SNOP priority uh, or CVSS. Basically, as I said, what we would expect is the true incidents to be at the higher top um, quadrants and the false incidents to be at the lower. The DARPA dataset itself has a quite abnormal distribution between true incidents and false incidents, but that's what we have to go with. So the true incident is 84.64%, uh, and the false incident is 15.36%. But putting that aside, <laughs> we found out, based on the results, that the vast majority of the false incidents were in the lower uh, quadrant, so 92.68% in RSM, as opposed to 67.07% in SNOR priority. And this is uh, some results uh, from uh, our experiments where you can see um, the different phases uh, of the DARPA dataset of the attacks and you can see the number of incidents that have been categorized in the different uh, low, uh, medium, high priorities, true incidents and false incidents. Um, in order to uh, depict the results a bit better, uh, we have created a graph which basically shows how with true incidents, how they are categorized with based just on snow priority, on CVSS, uh, and with the uh, RSM model. And for the false incidents, we can see the snow priority, CVSS, and the RSM model again. So, first of all, CVSS didn't, wasn't really very helpful at prioritizing incidents because most of them could not be classified. So, the best uh, comparable uh, thing would be uh, snow priority, but again there you can see with true and false incidents that it is kind of like this automatic shotgun approach where everything is important, everything is critical. Whereas um, the results with RSM were uh, slightly better and here you can see that the majority of uh, false alerts, um, so I think 90 something percent, uh, were in the lower quadrants. And also, um, it would be characteristic, that I think the best um, example to show this added granularity that you can get, say, with a, a response strategy model, would be in phase three um, here, where you can see, say, with snow priority, 100% of the incidents uh, of the true alerts have been classed in the uh, medium priority, 
whereas with uh, RSM, uh, it, it spans across three different mm. categories, th quadrants. So, to conclude, basically, uh, we have uh, shown some relationship between uh, the uh, incident prioritization and a response strategy model that will map uh, incidents with uh, responses. We, uh, it's not a perfect model, and of course, it's really uh, we cannot just base our results on uh, uh, the DARPA data set alone. Uh, uh, more research needs to be done. But we have shown that it provides uh, better results in comparison to SNOP priority and CDSS. Uh, alone. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs>